Hello everyone, I'm Vibhor Singh and today we'll be discussing the 31st problem of the CP31 sheet under the 1300 rated parameter. So as you can see, this is the CP31 sheet and the 1300 rated problems have been selected. And this is the 31st problem, simple string. ZS coder loves simple string. A string T is called simple if every pair of adjacent characters are distinct. For example, A, B, A, B, A and so these strings are uh, simple whereas something like AA or ADD are not simple. ZS coder is given a string S. He wants to change a minimum number of characters so that the string S becomes simple. Help him with this task. So we are given an input string S and we need to change the minimum number of characters in the string so that it uh, no two adjacent characters are same in it. Okay. So let's look at this first example itself. That is we are given we are given A, A and B, right? So this is a string of length 3 and we have to find a string or we have to change any number of characters in this such that no two adjacent characters are similar. So the first two characters are simpler. So one example answer that, the, that is given to us is B, A, B. That is, we'll change the first character to B and that is the optimal answer since we are changing only one character and no more than that. So we need to minimize the number of characters we have changed and in the end we have to print the final string uh, with the change characters. So that's it for the problem. I hope you're able to understand the problem. Let's discuss the expected time complexity for this problem. We're given that mod of S. So the length of the string is still 2 into 10 raised to 5. Right. So we know one second in code forces are approximately corresponds to 10 raised to 8 operations. Right. Now mod of S, let's call it N for now, is goes still 2 into 10 raised to 5. Right. So anything of the order of n or order of n log n should be fine but if we go anything of the order of n square or above that will give us tle right so we can form a line here and say that we have to stay in uh, order of n or logarithmic time itself right so that's it for the expected time complexity discussion now let's try to see how we solve the problem see whenever we have we have a given string a a b c c c d so what do we have to do? See, it's always better for us whenever we get adjacent elements, we should replace some character, right? We will need to replace some character. Now, which character is better for us to replace? That is, if I have two characters in adjacent, should I do replace the first or the second character, right? So this thing which we can understand by looking at these three over here. So if we look at these three, uh, the three C's. So if you look at these three, Basically, we should always change the second character if we get these two adjacent. If we change the second character, even if we have any adjacency ahead of it, that will get covered, right? So we should always change the second character. Right, we should always change the second character. Now, one thing that we need to keep in mind is that whatever change we make, we should not like, we should not introduce some uh, equal adjacent elements due to it. So what do I mean by that? Over here, the way we have, the way we have A, A, B, okay, the way we have A, A, B, if I'm changing the second character, that is, I'm saying this character, I'll change to something that is not equal to A, right? I should not make it B as well. That is, I should make it like A, something like C or something like D, right? But I should not make this A to, I should not make this A to B, right? I should not introduce some extra, uh, like adjacent equal elements. So that is what we have to keep in mind while introducing a new character. So from here, I can see a very simple solution that I can form for this problem. That is whenever I'm a, I find adjacent elements, I will be changing the second element. So I'll be looking at something like if S of I is equal to S of I minus one, then I have to change S of I. Right. And what do I change S of I? I will change S of I to some new character. Let's call it X. Okay. And for X, I have two conditions. X not equal to S of I minus one, which is basically it should not equal to S of I, right? I'm changing it. And X should not be equal to S of I plus one. Right. And we can implement this by a simple, I'll just put a loop on uh, a simple loop from A to Z. From A to Z. Whichever character 
satisfies these two conditions that it's not equal to i minus 1 and i plus 1 then we can uh, add that character to our current answer or we can add that character in the current place at our answer right and uh, another thing or a small thing that you can observe is maximum our loop of a to z will go only till c right that is we have only two conditions x cannot be equal to s of i minus 1 and x cannot be equal to s of i plus 1 so maximum it can go till c right i don't even need the entire loop till z even if you put it till z it doesn't matter it will maximum go till c so that's it for the overall problem discussion or the solution discussion now let's look at the code of the solution okay so first we have uh, the string s as input then we have taken a character array answer as our uh, for printing the answer why am i creating character array basically i cannot just take a string and keep appending in that because that can lead us to tle right that is why we need to take a character array and in the ca character array will or in the character vector we'll be appending the values so initially first character should be s of zero itself because we are always changing only the second value right we are never changing the first value then for each value from one to n since we have already covered the zeroth value we'll start from one so from each character from one to n I'll check the condition that if s of i is equal to answer of i minus 1, right? So instead of checking s of i equal to s, s of i minus 1, I'm checking s of i equal to uh, answer of i minus 1. Why am I checking this? So basically, I'm checking it for cases like, basically, if I have th the example of where I had three c's together, right? So if I have three c's together, I have changed this c, right? So my answer would look like I would have a c and let's say I put an a over here, right? So when I'm checking this character, in my string s, I have not modified the string, right? So I won't check s of i and s of i minus 1. I would instead check s of i with a of i minus 1 or answer of i minus 1 because in answer of i minus 1, I have changed the value, right? So that is why we are uh, checking uh, s of uh, if s of i is equal to answer of i minus 1, then we have the loop that j will go from a to z and then now j should not be equal to s of i minus 1. This is the first condition. And the second condition is j should not be equal to i plus 1 right and i put a small check that i should not overflow as well that is if i becomes n then the second condition is redundant right you could have put it right here like uh, another way to write this would be i can just put it i put an and over here and then i just put uh, i less than n minus 1 and j not equal to s of i something like this uh, s of i plus 1 something like this right i can just put it over here itself i like that is another way you could implement it there's no need of a nested uh, if statements but I have, nonetheless i have used nested if statements for uh, simpler understanding of the code that is this is the first condition of i minus 1 and for i plus 1 the additional check and if this condition basically if this condition was false then i can just put it over here that if i is n minus 1 then i will put this then i have to look at only the first condition that is j should not be equal to i minus 1 right there's no a value after the current value. So I don't need to care about the second condition. So even in this case, my answer can be J and in both the cases, I'm breaking the loop. And in the end, uh, if this is not satisfied, that is S of I is not equal to answer of I minus one. I don't need to modify my current index value or I don't need to modify the current character. So I will just put answer of I is equal to S of I. And in the end, we are printing the solution. So that's it. I hope you're able to understand the solution. Let's discuss the time complexity of the solution. So this out this entire for loop outer loop runs for order of n right and the inner loop over here this at max see if we look at the loop in itself it will run for 26 iterations at max right it will run for 26 iterations at max but as we have observed or as we discussed earlier that the maximum character the last character that we can get is c itself right and if you didn't understand that part you can take it as homework at, as to prove that why we will never need uh, anything more than c while running this for loop okay so uh, once you run, uh, so the overall complexity of this entire part would become order of like three into n. So we can just uh, omit the constant part and say this is overall order of n itself, the complexity of this entire uh, section. And then finally printing the answer is also of order of n itself, right? So that's the overall time complexity of a solution. So time complexity becomes order of n, right? And for the space complexity, we have taken a string uh, that is the input string of size n and uh, we have taken an answer vector which will also be of size n itself, right? So overall space complexity will become order of n itself. So that's it for the solution discussion. I hope you were able to understand it. Thank you.